Our hope is that the information contained in this video will provide answers to your questions related to side effects of chemotherapy, or chemo, and biotherapy. We hope this alleviates some of the anxieties that accompany receiving your first treatment. In addition to this video, other education options, such as one-on-one -on -one learning with a chemotherapy certified nurse or education via web camera are available. Your doctor or nurse can give you more details. For most patients, chemo will be given in an outpatient setting at one of our Florida hospital infusion centers or one of our physician practices. Our outpatient infusion centers are equipped to handle patients who are able to move about on their own. If you have special needs, please discuss them with the appointment scheduler or your physician's office so that we can help determine which treatment center is best suited to meet your needs. Your physician's office or scheduler will contact you to make your appointment. If you are receiving chemo in the outpatient setting, there are a few things you need to know. On the day of your treatment, we encourage you to eat a good breakfast prior to your appointment. There are sandwiches and drinks in most of our centers, but you may wish to bring your own food or snacks from home to enjoy. Typically, the infusion center is cool, but don't worry, we do offer warmed blankets. We also encourage you to wear socks and shoes to your appointment, not only to keep your feet warm, but also for your safety. For those patients that have a port or a central line, please wear a button-down shirt, as this will make it easier for your nurse to provide your care. If your physician has prescribed cream to help numb your port access site, please follow the package directions and apply one hour prior to coming to the center. This will help to expedite your care. Once you have arrived in our center and have checked in, you will be greeted by one of our staff members to bring you back to the infusion suite. You will be escorted to one of our reclining chairs where a nurse oversees your care. Most patients will spend a minimum of three hours in our centers. However, some chemo appointments can last up to 10 hours. In order to pass the time, you may bring iPads, electronics, or books. We welcome you to invite one friend or family member, age 15 or above, to sit with you throughout your treatment. Your nurse will go over your schedule for the day, as well as any medications that will be given throughout your treatment. When it is time to receive your treatment, two nurses will do a final safety check with you before administering your chemo. This includes scanning your patient bracelet, as well as the medication to be administered. Please feel free to ask questions as needed. We are here to help in any way that we can. Because chemo is a type of cancer treatment that uses medications to destroy or slow down the growth of cancer cells, it can also harm healthy cells such as those in the mouth, intestines, and those that cause hair to grow. It's very important that you notify your nurse of any medications or supplements you are currently taking at home. Before your treatment, you will be given specific information about the medications you will be receiving. In many cases, medications will be given prior to your chemo to help manage the anticipated side effects. Please keep in mind, this video is for general information and not everyone will experience the same side effect. There are a number of chemotherapy agents that can cause hair loss. However, not all of them. Loss of hair is dependent on the chemo drugs you are receiving. When patients are expected to lose their hair, it typically occurs within two to three weeks. Some patients will also lose their eyebrows, eyelashes, underarm hair, pubic hair, and leg hair. This may present as hair thinning, patchy, or total hair loss. Most hair loss is temporary and is expected to grow back once treatment is completed. When hair growth resumes, it may grow back a different color or texture. If you do lose your hair, don't worry. There are several community resources available to you. Some of these include Florida Hospital Eden Spa, American Cancer Society, and Look Good, Feel Better just to name a few. Nausea and vomiting are two of our patients' greatest concerns. Fortunately, we are doing a better job than ever in controlling them. Your doctor will discuss which medications may help to reduce or even eliminate these side effects throughout your treatment. You can look at your diet and make some simple changes that may be helpful in reducing these undesirable side effects.
Some things to eliminate include spicy, fatty, or acidic foods. Some patients also find relief in eating ginger or peppermint candy or drinking peppermint tea. Small frequent meals and light to moderate exercise can also be helpful. If weight loss due to nausea and vomiting becomes a problem during treatment, your physician may refer you to one of our registered dietitians to assist with your nutritional needs. If you are taking nausea medication and are still experiencing uncontrolled nausea or vomiting, you should contact your physician right away. Change in bowel habits can occur during chemo and or biotherapy treatments. Please keep track of any bowel changes during this time. You may experience diarrhea, which can lead to fatigue, skin irritation, and dehydration. Be sure to stay hydrated and notify your physician if it continues. Further testing may be needed to evaluate the cause of your diarrhea. Another change in bowel habits may be constipation. This can cause pain, rectal irritation, hemorrhoids, or tears that can lead to rectal bleeding. Tips to prevent or lessen constipation include increasing your fluid intake, moderate exercise, and eating foods rich in fiber. If constipation persists, please notify your physician. Some patients will experience changes in the color of their urine. Most chemotherapies are clear in appearance, but some are either orange or blue. This will change the color of your urine to either reddish orange or a purple color. This is temporary and will subside in 24 to 48 hours, depending on how well hydrated you are. Following your chemo, it is expected that your blood counts will drop. This includes your red and white blood cells, as well as platelets. Remember, when you are receiving chemo, it affects cancer cells and healthy cells. We typically see a drop in blood counts about a week to 10 days after your treatment. When your red blood cells are low, you feel more tired. This is because your body is having to work harder to deliver oxygen to all of the tissues in your body. Some patients find this frustrating because it can take more time to complete simple tasks due to low energy levels. When your white blood cells are low, it puts you at a greater risk for infection. Some things that you can do to prevent infection are good hand washing, avoid crowded places, prepare your food in a clean environment, and avoid people who are sick. It is important for you to have an easy to read thermometer in your home in the event that you feel that you may have a fever. Contact your physician if your temperature goes above 100.4 degrees. Further precautions related to your risk for infection will be discussed at the time of your treatment. In addition to your red and white blood cells, your platelets will also be low. Your platelets function like the glue in your blood and are what keeps you from bleeding and bruising. It's important to avoid sharp objects or anything that could cause you to bleed. Using a soft toothbrush or electric razor are recommended. Medications such as aspirin, or blood thinners should be discussed with your physician. As part of your treatment, your doctor may order medications to improve your blood counts. Lastly, if you have pets in your home, please discuss what type you have with your healthcare team and if there are any special precautions you should follow while undergoing treatment. Some of the medications that you are receiving may cause a condition called neuropathy. This is the sensation of numbness, tingling, or pain in your fingers or toes. Other types of changes can include decreased strength or mobility and sensitivity to cold. You may have difficulty with day-to-day -day activities such as walking, picking things up, or buttoning shirts. If you experience any of these, notify your doctor. This video was meant only to be an overview of what to expect prior to your chemo treatment and to answer some of the most commonly asked questions. Your nurse or chemo educator will be available to answer any further questions that you may have. Once you are caring for yourself at home, it is important for you to call your doctor if the following side effects or symptoms occur. Fever greater than 100.4 degrees, bleeding, uncontrolled diarrhea, constipation, nausea or vomiting, headaches, pain, or change in your level of overall functioning.
Above all, please remember that we are all here to assist in your care at Florida Hospital. At some point in your treatment, you may desire additional support services. These can be accessed by discussions with your oncology nurse or educator, by referring to the material in your chemotherapy education bag, or contacting the Oncology Support and Education Office. We look forward to meeting with you to provide continuing education throughout your cancer journey.